Okay, so in this video, we're going to demonstrate how to bend rot wire clasps around our abutment teeth that we blocked out. It's important to note that before you bend your wires that you have your case mounted so you can assess the wire and how it relates to the opposing occlusal surfaces so there's no interference between the wire and the opposing teeth. Uh, so a couple of things before we start. The amount of wire that you're going to use to bend around the tooth, you can visualize it by just looking at the outline of the wire, but certainly cut off a little more wire than you need. Rule of thumb is you should cut double the amount of wire that you need. So if I need about this much wire to bend the clasp around the 3-3, I'm just gonna double that distance to that. And the reason why I do that is because I wanna utilize the wire, the length of the wire, to create some leverage so I can use my fingertips to, to bend the wire. So a couple of things before we start bending the wire to, to take note, and I think is important. We have two sets of pliers that we're gonna be utilizing to bend the wire. One is the two-prong plier, and the other one is a three-prong plier that you see here. Notice that when you cut the wire from the spool, it's got a certain curvature to it. Go with a curvature, because it's a lot easier to work with a wire. So if I'm gonna bend the clasp to fit around the tooth, I'm going to initially hold the wire with my two prong and I'm holding the wire firmly with my right hand because I'm right handed and I'm going to rotate the wire with my plier and at the same time I'm putting pressure with my left finger here. So I start shaping the wire to fit around the tooth something like that. It would be counterproductive if you made that same bend of the wire in the opposite direction that the wire already has. So if I went the other way, it works, but certainly it's counterproductive. I think it'll still work. We also need to understand that the wire has some elasticity to it, but at some point it's got a proportional limit that once we bend the wire to a certain point, we can't really flex it back. And the more, we, more work we put at one area of the wire, uh, the weaker the wire becomes. The fact that I just made a curve or a turn on this wire, I actually stretched this part of the wire. You can't see it, it's very minute, but you end up stretching the wire. The sharper the angle, if I did that, that part of the wire right at the corner is a lot thinner than, than it was before because I had to stretch the wire. As I'm bending it, I'm actually stretching the wire and it becomes a little bit weaker. But, Regardless, the wire looks like it's intact. If I did that same bend with my three prong pliers, and I'll do it the opposite way just to prove a point, I actually made a little notch on the wire here and here because of the pressure that I'm applying with my three-prong. So whenever you can, avoid using the three-prong pliers and stick to the two-prong as much as you can. It's not always possible, but as much as we can. Certainly for the part of the wire that's going to, expose, that's going to be exposed outside the acrylic base, okay? And also, when you cut the wire, each time you cut the wire, the end of the wire is very sharp, very jaggedy. 
So when we finish bending the wire, we're gonna round this off before we tag it onto our model. Okay, so a couple of things to take note. And what you'll need for this exercise, you'll need your set of pliers, obviously. You'll need probably a number seven spatula so you can seal the wire down, a pencil, a rubber wheel, a rubber point, and a grinding stone so we can round off the tip of the wire and polish it. Okay, so I'm gonna start bending the wire around the 3-3 initially for the simple reason it is the easiest one of the bunch for me to bend right now because I'm right-handed. So it's easy for me to work from my, from my left side towards my right side. And the other two teeth that we need to bend wire on, it goes the other way. So I'm gonna start with something that's easy for me just to get my, thing, my, hang, my hands warmed up and get into a nice rhythm of bending the wire, okay? The other thing you can do is utilize your surveying table. I like to utilize a surveying table to position, it really doesn't matter about the path of insertion now, it really doesn't matter. We're just bending the wire, we've already done the path of insertion. But I'm gonna utilize the surveying table to give me a nice angle. So the angle that I'm looking at the tooth right now is this angle here that you see on camera. So I've adjusted the size of the surveying table to create a nice angle for me to look at because you're gonna be taking this wire on and off a lot of times by the time you get it right. You're gonna be going on and off by the time you adjust it and you get all the way to the end and cut it. So it's important that every time that you place the wire back on the cast that you reestablish the same position because every bend that you make on the wire is relative to the one before. Okay, so the first bend we're going to do is we're going to start with the tip of the wire, the terminal tip of the wire, the part of the wire that engages the undercut, and they're gonna, we're gonna make our way around the tooth to the guide plane. And until the wire reaches the guide plane, right where we indicated the outline of our acrylic base, which is right here, that part of the wire needs to be perfectly adapted to the surface of the tooth, of the abutment tooth. Okay, so you cannot have any gaps between the wire and the tooth itself. So I'm gonna start with bending the wire. And again, this is probably a little more than twice the length that I need. I need about that much wire. And I've cut off a little more than twice the length, maybe two and a half times the length, okay? So I'm going to start with the wire by holding it inside my two prong. And note that the two prong pliers has a rounded side and a square side. And we'll get to uh, a little bit later on how to use the different sides. But I'm going to rotate my wire by holding my wire, pinching my wire with my pliers into place and rotating my wire around the rounded side of the pliers. And as I'm doing this, I already have an image in my mind of that line. And that's why it's important to have a nice uh, accurate outline because it creates a nice visual. So when you start bending the wire, you sort of duplicate that. So I think I'm there, but let's try. And I'm going to apply, uh, position the wire onto the tooth surface and tentatively hold it with my left th thumb and see what the wire does. As I'm looking at this now, I think that the tip of the wire is a little too straight, so I need to make it a little more rounded. So this part of the wire from here, from the edge of my 
thumb to the tip of the wire looks like it's too linear. So I'm going to place my square side of my pliers just inside there and squeeze and I actually open the wire the other way. Now I'm going to take my three prong pliers but favor using the deepest part of the plier as much as you can because the tip of the pliers you have to use a lot of pressure and it will create that little notch or nick on the wire that we talked about earlier. So I'm going to gently position my pliers there and curve that wire a little bit past than I had before. So I'm going to reposition it back onto my tooth surface and see how that looks now. And that looks much better. So it's right on my red line and it's very important when you position that wire on and off the tooth, when you place it back on here, that you reestablish that position because the next bend you're going to do will always be relative to that position. If you change the position, then it's gonna make you think to do other things back here. So it's very important that when you initiate the bend of the wire, that is very accurate and you get a nice feel a positive fit of the wire around the tooth surface. And now you want to rotate the model so you can see where's the first, where the wire initially comes away from the tooth. I'm not sure if it's visible on camera, but I can tell you right now, this wire, there's a space right here between the wire and the tooth. So therefore, this part of the wire up here is hitting too early against the abutment tooth. So I'm going to make a bend going the other way. So I'm going to hold my wire and I'm going to make a little pencil mark right here as a, as a guide. And I'm going to make a bend the other way. You can certainly use your three prongs very carefully or you can use your two prong pliers and now I'm going to hold it here and go the other way and you can I hope you can see it on camera that now that the wire is not exactly straight but it somewhat mimics the outline of the clasp here so I'm going to put it back on here and that's a whole lot better so as it sits on the tooth right now, I have a very positive fit of the wire. Take note that I'm pinching the wire with my left thumb and I have the same consistent position of the wire before I get to my next bend. So now that I'm moving along, the next part of the wire that I see pulling away from the tooth is up here somewhere. It was here before, now I'm going to move to the next section. And I'm going to make a pencil line here. And this is where things become rather difficult because now I have to bend the wire around the tooth, stay on or above the height of contour, and start embedding the wire into the acrylic base. So there's a lot of things that are going to happen here and they need to happen all at once. And eventually, I mean, it takes time to do this, but like with everything else, it's possible. So I got my little pencil mark here. And I'm going to take the wire off. And it's also important to note that when you're bending the wire, hold it while it's off the model as if it was on the model. So therefore, I'm going to take it off the model and hold it in the same angle that was previously sitting on the model. So I'm not going to take the wire and twist it this way and start bending it. I want to have this image, this visual, visualization that it's still sitting on the tooth surface. And what I do is the bend that I'm going to make next, I always like to make the next bend directly away from me. So in order for me to go around this tooth, I want to rotate this model 
as if the next bend that I'm going to make for this wire is going to go directly away from me this way. So therefore, I'm going to remove the wire, I'm going to hold it as if it's still sitting on the model, the same angle, I'm not going to twist it one way or another, as if it's still sitting on the model, I'm going to use the tip of the two prong, the rounded side, and all I have to do is adjust this plier, and this is where you need to practice, and make that bend utilizing the length of the wire as leverage so I don't create any notches or nicks on the wire and make that wire bending directly away from me. And don't do it excessively. See how it goes before you get too far. And you might have interference with the other side of the cast, which you can then just simply cut the wire a little bit short. But I think I'm on the right track here. So far, it looks pretty good. I need to get this part of the wire a little bit closer to the tooth. So therefore, I'm gonna remove the wire, place my three prong on the inside, a little more upright now, right there. Hold the wire as if it's still sitting on the tooth and I'm going to bring it in this, bring it in this way, a little closer. Hold it really close, and you can see the pressure on my left index finger. I'm bringing it in this way. Now, I'm gonna reposition that wire back on the tooth. That looks better. And now I'm gonna have to go towards the ridge in here. But when I do this, I have to pull away from the guide plane that we created through our block out to ensure that I have enough space with the, between the wire and the guide plane that this is gonna be created in acrylic eventually to make sure that I have enough acrylic between the wire and the guide plane to ensure that the wire is totally embedded inside the acrylic. But now you have to assess how much you have to come down and out again. Because if you just bend it down, you're gonna have interference with your model here. So I see about four to five millimeter of length here. And then I'll have to bend the wire the other way so I can assess the wire. So I'm gonna remove it again. And you, again, you can use your two prong, but I'm going to use my three prong here, but not to squeeze the wire excessively. I'm just holding it now. And as I'm holding it, I'm pulling down this way. And I determined that I have about four to five millimeter of travel before I hit the ridge. So now I gotta go the other way to be able to assess the wire. And that's the tough part. So let me see what I did here. That looks pretty good, but this wire is very tight right up against the guide plane. It's touching my wax now. And until you get a sense of having enough distance with the guide plane, you need to do the block out because it gives you a good visual that, that you're too close to the guide plane. You need to be away from the guide plane about 30 degrees or so. So in order for me to bend this wire out, I can simply put my two prong in here and hold that first piece of the wire and then use the length of the wire as leverage and pull it away. Let's see how that looks. That's better. It's away from the guide plane, but I lifted the wire off the ridge again, so I need to bend it back down.
you can see that it's too high off the ridge, but it's getting close. So I'm going to use my three prong again. And again, I'm not gonna squeeze my three prong, just holding it, but I'm actually squeezing the wire on either side with my fingertips. I'm using a little pressure with my three prong, but not a lot. Let's see how this looks now. That looks good, but this part of the wire now is preventing me from assessing what I've done here. So therefore, I need to cut this wire before it starts to hit the cast somewhere here somewhere here so I'm gonna cut that off and once again when you do cut things off that little piece is gonna go flying so tentatively hold both sides so it stays in your fingertips place my wire back on here I am the wire is sitting completely over the red line and I'm entering into the acrylic base. I'm still a little too close to the guide plane. So I need to move this wire away from the tooth some more. And very often you can do that by just putting the flat portion of your two prong in here and squeezing the opposite way just like that. Let's see that again. So there we go. So I'm away from the guide plane. This is the distance that I want to see, about a 30 degree angle between the wire and the guide plane itself in here. The top of the wire as it enters the acrylic base, it's on or just above the height of contour. And the wire down here, you should have enough relief to allow acrylic to flow underneath it, no less than half a millimeter. And just lock this back on here. And now we can start creating that zigzag effect with our wire so it retains inside the acrylic base. So it doesn't twist inside the acrylic, otherwise it will. So I've made one little angle here. And now, again, you have to remove the wire and visualize the angle of the zigzags so you're parallel to the model surface. Otherwise, if you make it the other way, it's gonna create a lot of height in the wire. So the angle that I'm seeing now is this angle here this angle this way. So I want to bend the wire this angle, not up and down like this, zigzag this way, but this way in here to follow the model surface and be parallel to the model surface. Not an easy thing to do, but I think if you hold it in the same way as if it was sitting on the model, it's a lot easier. So I'm going to go that way that way and I'm going to rotate again and do about four or five of them and you can always cut it shorter if you have a little too much and I think that's enough so we got one two three and a tip so again I'm going to hold the excess wire here and I'm going to cut it at the same length as the rest of it and now I got to place it back on here did I nick the wire while making the zigzags? I probably did, but it doesn't make a, it doesn't make a big deal. It's not a big deal or it doesn't make a huge, um, it's not a big issue because that part of the wire is gonna be embedded inside the acrylic. You're not gonna see it and it's not going to affect the overall strength of the wire. So again, I'm going to hold it right over my red line and see what the wire is doing here. So I, you can, hopefully you can see on the video that the end of the wire is touching the model, but this part of the wire is not. So therefore, I need to bend it down earlier here and then come up again to have a uniform space under the wire. 
So, again, I'm gonna hold it as if it's sitting on the cast. I'm gonna take the flat portion of my two-prong plier, squeeze. So now the wire is gonna hit, the tip of the wire is gonna hit the model much earlier, but I'm gonna come about halfway through and in between my little zags, create a little bend. Now, when you're using your three prong inside here, you gotta be careful to find the flat portion of the wire because if you're trying to bend it around where you bend it before, this wire is gonna twist in your fingers and poke a hole into your skin. Be very careful. Let's see how this wire looks now. I think I'm getting closer. Again, I'm not even looking at this now. I'm still looking of positioning the wire as accurately as I can, like before. And as I did this, I realized that I pulled a wave here from the guide surface or from the tooth surface a little too early. So I'm gonna take my three prong because it's very difficult now to bend it with the two prong pliers and gently bend this wire back in a little bit. Back on here, and that looks a whole lot better. And if we look at the part of the wire that's supposed to be embedded into the acrylic, you can clearly see now the tip is a little too high. We wanna have about a half a millimeter to a millimeter spacing between the wire and the model surface itself, which is very simply, um, done by just bending from here down. So you can make a little pencil line or you can just make a mental note where you need to bend the wire to make that adjustment to get that wire closer down to the model but without affecting the position of the wire around the labial surface. So right about here I'm gonna bend the wire so it gets a little bit closer to the tooth surface as if it's sitting on the cast, right about here. And very often, the amount of adjustment that you have to make is more of a feel than a visual. You probably didn't see that on the video, but I certainly felt it with my fingertips. And there we go. So I have about a half a millimeter to a millimeter of spacing of the embedded portion of the wire. It's relatively close to where um, I need to be, just inside the crest of the ridge. So when you're satisfied with the shape of the wire, I'm just gonna bend this tip down a little bit more because I feel like it's poking up a little bit away from the cast. So once you bend your wire, just want to make sure that I'm on the right spot. That looks good. You want to seal your wire just at the tip with some base plate wax. for assessment purposes. In real cases, you would seal the whole length of the wire. But for assessment purposes, we're just gonna seal the tip so we can have a nice visual for the spacing under the wire, inside the acrylic, and certainly around the tooth. Uh, I will bend the other two wires off camera and then we'll take a closer look uh, and assess these wires a little bit closer. 